So it's the summertime and the living is easy. Well, so the Sam Cooke song said. Is the living easy for pets? It can be. Summertime can be a great time for dogs. They can really enjoy life. The long, bright days, so you can walk your dog at six in the morning or at nine o'clock at night. The outdoors, it's, it's bright and it's pleasant temperatures and it's just a lovely time to be out and about. So yeah, summertime can be great, but there's some tips that you should remember to make sure that it's safe and enjoyable. And I think the first thing is, is the sun. What about the sun? How can that impact on dogs? Well, most dogs aren't bothered by it at all. But what I do see from time to time is white dogs um, that like to sunbathe. That's when I see an issue. And, and in particular, a lot of white dogs, for some reason, they like to roll over in the sun and go like this and enjoy the rays on their tummy. Now, um, that doesn't matter for, for much of the body, but the, the actual belly, where there isn't much fur, that can get sunburnt. So if you've got a white dog that likes rolling in the back in the sun, then you have to use sunblock on them. And that just means literally smearing waterproof um, total sunblock on the hairless bits of their skin underneath. And that will stop them getting sunburn. In cats, it's a different issue. They're prone to cancer of the ear tips and the nose, and they have the sunblock put there. But for most dogs, that's not an issue. A few dogs get particular skin diseases affecting the nose and the ears, and they might need sunblock, but it's quite rare, and your vet would guide you through that. So that's the direct effect of the sun. What about the heat? Heat's a really big issue for dogs in the summer, because as you probably know, dogs can't sweat. You know, we sweat armpits all over our body, our arms. We sweat, and when we sweat, that the moisture evaporates from our skin, carrying heat with it, and that keeps us cool. Well, dogs can't do that. The only way they can lose heat is um, by um, water evaporating from their tongue. That's why they pant. <laughs> when they pant, they're pushing air across their tongue, backwards and forwards, very quickly, and the, the water on the tongue evaporates, and as the water evaporates, it takes heat with it. I don't, I don't know if you've ever put your hand in front of a dog when they're panting and felt the, the, the warmth of their breath. It's really hot. They lose a lot of heat by panting. That has several implications. The first thing is it means they need lots and lots of water in the summer because um, they're losing water from their tongue and they have to drink to replace that. And what it also means is that they are prone to overheating more than, than, than other animals. What that means is that you can't leave a dog in a place where it's likely to become overheated because they'll get dangerously overheated. And the one that everybody knows about is not leaving your dog in the car because the, the airspace in the car is restricted, sunlight comes to the windows, heats it up, and the dog in the car is producing heat from its body and losing the heat from its tongue. And so the air around the dog gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, and, and then dogs die of heat stroke. And everybody knows that, yet still every year you hear stories about dogs dying in cars. So for that reason, you need to just doubly remember it. But the other common cause of heat stroke that a lot of folk don't realize is that when dogs exercise, their muscles produce loads of heat. So if, a, if you take your dog out in the middle of a sunny day and you let them run for ages, um, as well as the body heat being produced, they're also getting heat onto their body from the sun and they can only lose so much, so much heat by panting and so again the temperature goes up and up and up. And I recently had a phone call from a friend who was out walking their black Labrador in the middle of a sunny day and I said, my dog's just collapsed. Um, you know, he seems bright but he's just collapsed and he's panting all the time. What can be going on? And I said to them, your dog is suffering from heat stroke. You need to get them cooled down as rapidly as possible. So I told them to pick up their dog and to carry it to a nearby stream, and put the dog in the stream, put lots of water on it to cool it down. Um, because, um, you know, otherwise a uh, heat stroke can, can become a vicious circle where the dog gets hotter and hotter and hotter lying there in the sun and then they end up getting um, damaged their internal organs because of the increased body temperature. It's far, far better to prevent that by not exercising your dog in the full heat of the day. If you're going to take your dog out in the summertime, go in the early hours, like before nine in the morning or after five in the evening, where it's a bit cooler and your dog's not going to suffer from heat stroke in the same way. So that's the sun and the heat. Those are two really important issues to deal with. Are there other some issues that we should think about? Well, one of them is what sort of exercise do you do with your dog? Because you've got all this extra time because of the long, long days to walk your dog, you know, you should think about how you interact with your dog. And a thing that you must know not to do is to throw sticks. And I've talked about that before as well. But sticks can injure dogs. I've seen dogs die on the spot after chasing a stick. What happens is, very simply, 
what happens is this the stick is thrown, it lands on the ground like this, like a javelin, with a sharp end of the stick sticking up. The dog runs after the stick, goes to grab it, and as it goes to grab it, the stick stays where it is, the dog moves forwards, and look, the dog gets stabbed in the back of its throat. I'll never forget one dog, and I rushed to the scene because I got an emergency call from the owner, and the, the lady was standing there over the body of her dog. The dog had bled out from a wound at the back of the throat, and the dog was just lying there dead, and the poor distraught woman was, was there beside her dog hugging it. And she had done a simple, innocent thing of throwing a stick for a dog, not realising the risk. So just don't take that risk. If you're going to throw something for your dog, and it's great to do that, throw something safe. My favourite thing is to use a, a ball in a stick chuck it thing, you know, those ball launches, and your dog can chase a ball happily for hours. You don't need to don't need to get sticks at all. Yes, you will have much more time to play with your dog in the, in the summer months, but make sure you do it safely.